do I build my network? What are some best practices? Dude, that's awesome. Connect. I'm Emma, and I'm joined with my co-host, Sam, and we're going to talk about LinkedIn. First off, Sam, what is LinkedIn? LinkedIn is a social network where you're able to connect with other professionals all over the world. So, Emma, did you know that two professionals join LinkedIn every second and 50% of Americans with a college degree are on LinkedIn? That's a huge deal. Obviously, LinkedIn has a strong presence for all businesses. Let me ask you. Hopping on LinkedIn, what are some things I need to do to get it organized? Well, it's important for you to make sure you describe every role that you had throughout your career. Have a very professional headshot. Make sure you're really friendly, smile, and invite people in. And then also, don't forget about those keywords. Yes, because that will also help you to be found in a search. Also, you really got to think about what's relevant. What would be your target audience or the business you're trying to target? What would they be searching for and what do you want to come up as? Like for me, I do a lot with social media. So I'm definitely looking for people searching for social media help, social media marketing. They want to know about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So those are some keywords that definitely need to be infused into my LinkedIn. So a question that I get a lot when it comes to LinkedIn, I'm sure you do too, is like, how do I build my network? What are some best practices? And honestly, I've just taken the approach that I give for social media, which is you don't want to just go and follow some random people just to grow your following. You want to follow people that are relevant to your industry or within your area if you're a local brick and mortar business. When it comes to LinkedIn, does it matter if I know the person or the, can I just sum it up like to me it makes sense to keep it very relevant like social media but you're the expert what i think it's really important that you have a reason for connecting you can connect with someone you've never even met but use the things that are right there in front of you you have people's description so you get to learn something about them they're in your industry and it's interesting to you and you want to know more let that person know in that personalized connection request. So don't be too concerned like, oh, I don't know that person and they're going to think I'm weird. They're there to connect. So it's OK, but make sure you let them know why you want to connect. So that's why LinkedIn always advises leave a note. You're more likely to connect, right? Exactly. And that's actually true. So with doing my career, I do a lot of traveling and speaking. So I'm meeting essentially strangers all the time. And it always catches my eye when someone is connecting with me on LinkedIn. And then they say, hey, Emma, I was on your webinar yesterday. I'm like right away, I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Connect. <laughs> we are now in the same network. So do you advise that? Is that a good practice for everybody listening in? Like, hey, leave a message of why you know this business. Exactly. You want to make sure that you give them a reason why you're reaching out. Because in all honesty, there's so many people out there that are just hitting the connect button without sending a message. A lot of people do just disregard that. So you want to make sure you give people a reason to get to know you more. And of course, every so often, you want to make sure you follow up. Make sure your network is going to be relevant. So make sure that you're following up with them. And you know, a smaller, more relevant network is so much better than a large one that just is not in touch. Same with Facebook. I was just talking about this recently with some local heroes, you know, cool, cool, cool. You have a large following. They're like, yeah, that's social proof, right? Not necessarily. You want to make sure that you check like the hygiene of that list of followers and ensure that they're in fact relevant and pertinent to your network. All right, Sam, I think that it's time that I confess something. Uh, I don't post on my LinkedIn and I definitely <laughs> enjoy when other people do and I consume it, but I don't know, I just don't take the time to do it. Is that a big deal? Is that like a big driving force of being on there? Is creating content? What are your thoughts? It's really important to create some content because just going from a casual, you know, viewer on LinkedIn, creating content makes you stand out. More things that people like, comment, or share, it increases your visibility. And the whole point of being on that platform is to be seen. And that's what you want. So you may want to take your LinkedIn game up a notch, Emma. This is sounding a lot like social media. It is. And it's okay to be personable. You know, yes, LinkedIn is a professional platform, but at the end of the day, it is social media. What's the first word? Social, how people relate and connect with each other. That's what you want to make sure you do. So don't feel like it's stuffy. LinkedIn has definitely changed over time. It's okay to be personable. Well, I saw a quote though that said, LinkedIn is where humor goes to die. 
I know what people are talking about with that, but honestly, you make of it what you want. If you want to be connected with people that like your personality, showcase it. LinkedIn now has video. You can also put yourself on video if you're comfortable with that. <gasps> Idea. I could add this video to my LinkedIn. Well, I think so. Okay, Emma. So you said you're going to beef up your LinkedIn game. So let's start to think about the type of content we're going to create. It's really important. A lot of people think, you know, keep it professional, you know, stay away from, you know, things that are like politics and things of that nature. That is important. But at the same time, don't forget, you can't separate your professional and personal. I know. And plus, people like to laugh and they smile. Do. So it's important. If you're going to share some personal anecdote, it's okay. But give people some insight behind it. Like, day at the beach. You showcase that you're having fun and you're relaxing. But you can always tie back in the point that you're not all about work. You like to laugh. You like to you get away. I love and it's the beach. it's important so that you don't get burnt out. Very important in a professional. All right, Sam, this has been awesome. I've learned a lot about LinkedIn. I'm a little less intimidated by it, and I'm excited <laughs> to go on there and update my profile. Uh, just thinking about what I already have in place with my social media, I've got that content calendar to keep my strategy on track. It makes sense to me, correct me if I'm wrong, I need to add my LinkedIn into this content calendar. Absolutely right. You want to make sure that you have a good goal that's feasible for you of how many people you connect to on a regular basis. I suggest one to two per week, start out with that, because quality is way better than just quantity. You want these connections to mean something and be significant. That's really building your network in a responsible way. That's a wrap. You just learned how to build your LinkedIn network. Be sure to like this video. Hey, share it on LinkedIn. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell so you're not the last to know about our next video. And make sure you comment below and let us know what is your go-to message when you're sending those LinkedIn connection requests. This is The Journey. See you next time.